could we have stumbled upon the remains of the notorious city of Sodom? This question has fascinated archaeologists and biblical scholars alike, leading to the discovery of two potential sites that might once have been the infamous city, Bab Edra and Tel El Hammam. Let's dive into the biblical account of Sodom's destruction, as told in Genesis 19.24.28. The city was known for its wickedness, a den of iniquity that was swallowed by divine wrath in the form of fire and brimstone. This event was so significant that the name Sodom has since become synonymous with vice and divine punishment. Now imagine a place that aligns with this biblical description, Bab Ed Dra. Located in the southern region, this site was proposed in the 1970s as the possible location of Sodom. But what makes Bab Ed Dra such a compelling candidate? Well, it's not just its geographical location that aligns with the biblical account. The archaeological evidence found at Bab Ed Dra paints a picture of an ancient city, rich with early pottery, signs of a prosperous society that could have been Sodom. But the most compelling piece of evidence? Signs of fiery destruction, a layer of ash and burnt materials eerily echoing the biblical account of Sodom's fiery end. But perhaps the most fascinating aspect of Babedra is its southern location. When considering all the biblical information, a southern position for Sodom seems more likely. This Coupled with the artifactual evidence found at the site, makes Bab Ed Dra a strong contender for the lost city of Sodom. The southern location of Bab Ed Dra and its early pottery evidence make it a compelling contender for the lost city of Sodom. But the search is far from over. As we continue to unveil the secrets of the past, who knows what other pieces of the puzzle we might find. Diving deeper into Bab Ed Dra, one finds more than just pottery shards. This ancient site, proposed as the potential city of Sodom back in the 1970s, offers a wealth of archaeological evidence that aligns strikingly well with the biblical narrative. It's not just pottery fragments that tell the history here. Among the ruins, archaeologists have found signs of a fiery destruction, a cataclysmic event that echoes the biblical account of Sodom's demise. Genesis 19.28 speaks of the smoke of the land ascending like the smoke of a furnace, a description that resonates with the evidence unearthed at Bab Edra. Now let's contrast this with Tel El Hammam, another proposed site for Sodom. While it holds its own historical significance, it lacks the distinct signs of fiery devastation that are so evident at Bab Edra. The divergence in the archaeological record between these two sites is indeed intriguing. The Bible also gives us geographical clues that seem to point towards Bab Edra as the more likely site of Sodom. Various passages suggest that Sodom was located near the Dead Sea. Genesis 13.10, for instance, describes the land around the city as well watered like the Garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, in the direction of Zoar. This description fits well with the area around Bab Ed Dra, which is closer to the Dead Sea than Tel El Hammam. Moreover, Deuteronomy 29, 23 speaks of a land with brimstone and salt, a burning waste, unsown and unproductive, and no grass grows in it like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim. This too aligns with the geological characteristics of the region around Bab Edra. The plethora of evidence at Bab Edra, including its fiery end, aligns with the biblical account, making it a strong candidate for Sodom. What does the Bible have to say about Sodom's location? It's a question that has intrigued scholars and archaeologists alike. Let's delve into this matter by examining the scriptures that provide clues to Sodom's geographical position. Firstly, we turn to Genesis 13:10-12. It's here that we find Lot, Abraham's nephew, choosing for himself the entire Jordan Valley, which he saw was well watered. It's described as being similar to the Garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. The scripture specifically mentions that Lot journeyed east, and thus they separated from each other. Abraham settled in Canaan, while Lot settled in the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. The interpretation of this verse suggests a southern location for Sodom, as Lot moving east from Abraham, who was in Canaan, places Sodom to the south. Now let's consider Deuteronomy 29, 23. This verse speaks of the whole land burned with brimstone and salt, 
nothing sown and nothing growing, where no plant can sprout, an overthrow like that of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim. The reference to the land being burned with brimstone and salt, and the comparison to the overthrow of the cities, aligns with the archaeological evidence at Bab Edra. The early pottery found at this site, along with signs of fiery destruction, match the biblical description of Sodom's fate. So what can we deduce from these scriptures? When we align the biblical descriptions with the archaeological findings, it seems to suggest that the location of Babedra holds more weight as the potential site of the ancient city of Sodom. While Tel El Hammam certainly has its merits, the southern location of Bab Edra corresponds more closely with the geographical indicators provided in the Bible. When interpreting the Bible's geographical clues, one finds that they point us towards Bab Edra. So, the biblical argument, when combined with archaeological evidence, leads us to this conclusion. But the quest for Sodom's true location continues, enriching our understanding of these ancient narratives and their place in our world today. So, have we found the lost city of Sodom? This question has been a point of contention for archaeologists and biblical scholars alike. Let's reiterate what we know so far. Two potential sites have been identified as the infamous city of Sodom, Bab Edra and Tel El Hammam. However, the evidence tilts more significantly towards Bab Edra. Discovered in the 1970s, this site has yielded a wealth of archaeological treasures such as early pottery and signs of a fiery destruction, which align with the biblical description of Sodom's end. The location of Bab Edra also aligns with the biblical narrative. According to Genesis, Sodom was located in a southern region, which matches the geographical location of Bab Edra. This southern location, coupled with the archaeological findings, makes Bab Edra a strong contender for the lost city of Sodom. But what does this mean for our understanding of biblical history? If Bab Edra is indeed Sodom, it serves as a tangible link to our past, a testament to the accuracy of the biblical narrative. It provides us with a window into the world of the Old Testament, allowing us to better understand the cultural and historical context of the biblical stories. However, it's important to remember that archaeology is a field of study filled with debate and differing interpretations. While the evidence for Bab Edra is compelling, it doesn't definitively prove that this site is the lost city of Sodom. It merely suggests that it could be. I would encourage you to delve further into this topic, to examine the evidence and draw your own conclusions. After all, the pursuit of knowledge is a journey, not a destination. While the debate continues, the evidence for Babedra is compelling. Could we have finally found the lost city of Sodom? The evidence certainly suggests so. What can we learn from the story of Sodom? This ancient history brims with lessons that resonate even in our modern world. Sodom's story is a stark reminder of the dire consequences of moral decay and societal corruption. It is a call for us to uphold righteousness, to live in harmony with one another and to extend compassion and hospitality to our fellow beings. The potential archaeological discoveries at sites like Bab Edra serve to illuminate these timeless narratives, bringing them to life in a tangible manner. As we sift through layers of ancient pottery and signs of fiery destruction, we are not just uncovering the remnants of a bygone civilization, but also piecing together the jigsaw of our shared human history. These findings do more than just substantiate biblical accounts. They strengthen our faith, reminding us of the enduring relevance of biblical teachings. They encourage us to delve deeper, to question and explore, to seek truth and understanding in the scriptures and in the world around us. The potential discovery of Sodom at Bab Edra offers us not just a glimpse into the past, but also a reflection on our present and future. They serve as a mirror, reflecting our triumphs and failures, our struggles and hopes, our past, present and future. In this light, we are all archaeologists, constantly excavating, learning and growing. 